You are at Lake Rant, where I rant about whatever my $10 a month plus patrons want me to rant about. You can get one of these by being one of those. This one is for Satoshi Nakamoto, who says, Rant about general relativity and quantum mechanics. Interested to hear your thoughts and opinions on open questions in physics and computing, especially within general relativity, space-time, quantum mechanics, energy, and computational complexity. I've included links to relevant YouTube videos for these topics below. Some potential questions to discuss. How do you feel about the observer effect? That is, that simply observing or measuring something can change it. Within space-time, how do you feel about causality and the lack of two observers being able to agree on the sequence of events? Does this have implications for how we should think about free will? Do you think there is, or do you think you personally have a solution to, a unifying theory of everything which can reconcile the differences between general relativity and quantum field theory to fully explain how the universe works? What is your thought of string theory as the solution of, to the theory of everything? What do you think about the feasibility of th thorium reactors compared to other renewable energy sources? And do you think P equals MP? Uh, and then he has a list of relevant media, which I watched, including videos on Schrodinger's cat, the double slit experiment, quantum entanglement, space-time, general relativity, the theory of everything, string theory, thorium reactors, P versus NP. And the total watch time was 1.5 hours. So there's the full comment. Uh, and I guess I'll just go through each of these questions and talk about them. So uh, first of all, I want to say that watching these videos, there were some of them that kind of went over my head or where I was really struggling to understand exactly, particularly like the double slit experiment. I couldn't exactly understand what the implications were of it uh, as I was watching. I was like, this is fucking a mind fuck, but what is it? What does this imply about the nature of the universe? Um, it was difficult for me to, 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 to fully understand, but I really appreciated getting to space time and uh, causality. That section gave me some terminology that I needed that I didn't have that uh, has helped me with writing Kusomega Volume 3 because essentially uh, Kusomega is a story about the gods of space and time and the god of causality above them and, uh, and, and, and the idea that you know causality is above both of those forces in some way. So, uh, yeah, that was, that was definitely helpful for me to watch. But, um, you know, a lot of this stuff I, I have known about or thought about in other less concentrated forms, not necessarily knowing, like, terminologies and stuff, but a lot of this comes up in media, you know, um, in storytelling. So, like, in terms of how this all affects, I guess I should go through these, uh, these, these one by one, but I want to talk about the one about free will. Within space-time, how do you feel about causality and the lack of two observers being able to agree on a sequence of events? Does this have implications for how we should think of free will? First of all, I don't really think of free will as, like, a really relevant concept in any way, because ultimately... I mean, causality, the, the nature of causality is such that, you know, everything has to sort of happen the way it's going to happen. Like, everything leads into each other. Everything is caused by the thing previously. So if everything you do is caused by, you know, whatever led you up to that moment, then you were always going to do it. And I, I can't imagine, like, you know, I... I I'm literally hesitating in this sentence because I'm trying to wrap my head around how I could explain that I could not possibly have predicted what I was going to say in this video or how this was going to go. And in a way, the fact that I stumped myself so hard um, and took myself off plan kind of is fucking with my mind. Anyway, um... Yeah, the point being, I don't really believe in free will. I don't think that you could really uh, decide on what's going to happen. I think it's the natural result of what, you know, whatever is going on, basically, in a, in a you know, nanosecond to nanosecond basis, I guess. Um, so, anyway, I guess that answers that question. I'm not sure. How do I feel about the observer effect? Simply observing uh, or measuring something can change it. I mean, it's true. That, that that certainly is the case, so that's how I feel about it. Um, but it's... Uh, in terms of, like, how does it make me feel about reality, I guess, 
I mean, I've been saying for a long time that even if there is an object, so okay, I have this video objectively good doesn't fucking exist, right? And I always, I will always make the argument that there's no way to objectively determine that something is good because there's just no, there's no basis, there's no, uh, you know, we cannot determine a basis for that. And I will also have extended that to say that like we really cannot speak on the subject of objectivity, like we have no grounds to say that what we see is real. Like, we have... Everything that we believe is true about our world could be deliberately false and twisted on some higher plane of reality than what we can perceive. And we know that our ability to perceive the universe is, like, what... Like, what we see it as being is simply what we are capable of observing, you know? And there's no reason to think that we are capable of observing the reality of the situation. So while it's possible that objectivity could exist, there is no reason for us to, you know, per, like to claim that we that we have it, that we that we could ever perceive it. We cannot prove that we could ever perceive it. Um, you know, so I would say that it's it's best to consider if we're going to talk about objectivity to talk about it in terms of the subjective experience of what we can observe, you know, um, like objective within these parameters, but that's not necessarily what reality is. Um, there's this great, great quote from this one dude. I don't remember who he is. It's a song, the, a Milo song samples this quote where this guy says, I think what the pragmatists should have said is that um, there's nothing to be said about God. You can't talk about God because there's just nothing to be said about him. Just like, you know, the word true is something that we ascribe to things that we've we've verified and observed. But truth with a capital T is uh, is like God. You know, there's not much you can say about it because it's there's nothing to prove. There's no way to prove that it's not, that there's nothing above what you understand, you know. Um, anyway. Uh, do you think there is, or do you personally have a solution to a unifying theory of everything? Uh, I mean, this is, again, like I just said, there's theories that, like, make sense. Like, like, string theory, I used to be pretty into string theory just in the sense that, like, you know, it's a possible explanation for how the dimensions work and how the universe exists. And, like, if string theory is the, the only ten-dimensional theory, like, I know about the whole, you know, theory of ten dimensions, I like... I like all that stuff. I've incorporated all of that into my story. Like, uh, you know, I, I don't know how apparent it is yet that Kusumega is going to go up through different dimensions like that, um, you know, and some of my other stories do so as well. But, uh, you know, I don't necessarily think, again, that that the logical structure that we believe the universe to have actually exists beyond, say, the fourth dimension. You know, like, we... We can observe that there are things in our universe that we don't entirely understand how they function or, like, how the fuck does this, you know, how, how does how does the double slit experiment, how does this happen? Like, why is this, you know, we're looking at it and we're just like, hmm, the universe is complicated. And it's like, yeah, the, the rules are, are fairly unknown. Um, I don't remember much about the thorium reactor video because I did watch these uh, a couple weeks ago, but... Um, it, I do remember thinking it sounded like it was the way to go. I mean, any kind of energy, whatever is the best type of energy is what we should be pursuing, you know? Like, every time somebody talks about how nuclear energy is, like, one of the best forms, one of the least dangerous in spite of the massive catastrophes that it has caused just because the danger is so visible and visceral and, you know, incident, like, one big incident that it draws a lot of attention to itself, whereas, uh, you know, the actual degradation of the of the world and the, the amount of deaths caused to humans by other energy sources is much higher. So, uh, you know, I always think, yeah, we got to go for the best ones, dude. If you got a good idea, fucking use it. Um, and I remember watching P versus NP and literally <clears throat> not understanding. It was a little too math for me, buddy. I don't math. I don't even remember if it was actually very mathematical. I just remember it not making sense. But when I see P equals NP, it looks like a math question. So I assume that's why I didn't understand it. So uh, I rank myself at a uh, 6 out of 10 intelligence based on 
my experience of these videos, and that's fine. 